Hello, welcome to another tutorial for Unreal Engine Made Easy. Let's go. In this video, we'll go over how to utilize Blueprint interfaces to trigger events between Blueprints along with input reference values. In most projects, you'll be in control of a player controller and or a controlled character. So if you want anything else like an object, another actor, or UI element to do something, then you'll need to communicate between the Blueprints to trigger events. This could be anything from triggering a simple interaction, an attack command, or really anything that you can think of. For our example demonstration here, let's start out by triggering this example actor to start moving around. We'll call him Marty, and he's just a simple actor blueprint with a default Manny Mesh. So let's go over exactly how to set this up, explaining all the steps along the way. We'll start by creating a blueprint interface. Right click in the content browser, navigate to the blueprint category, and select blueprint interface. As always, make sure to name it however you'd like, and then we can open it up. For the demonstration, we'll call this one Interface Marty. So now it's pretty simple within the interface. All we need to do is create a function by clicking the Add button and then label it. We'll label this one Marty Move. For now, that's all we need to do. Next, we'll open the blueprint for the actor or the object where we want to trigger the event. In this case, we'll open our example actor Marty's blueprint. Then navigate to the class settings. This is the one with the cog wheel, not the class defaults. Now in the details panel of the class settings, you'll see an interface category. Here we can click Add and then we can search for Marty's interface blueprint that we just made. Compile and save after that, and then now we'll have access to the event that we just created within the interface. So we can just right click in the event graph and search for Marty Move as we labeled it. Now here is where we want to place the actual event node, which will look like this. For now we'll just set up a simple move command here with no destination in particular. That will be fine for now, and we should see Marty start to wander around if our interface event and trigger is set up correctly. Now we need to trigger the event from our player character or player controller. So let's go ahead and create an example input key in the graph here so that we can test this out. I'll go ahead and just use zero. So now what we need is the reference to our example actor, Marty. For now we'll just use get actor of class, specify the Marty blueprint, and then we can pull off from there and search for our interface event, Marty move. Later we'll learn a better way to get this actor reference by also using interface events, but we'll go like this for now. On this end where we're triggering the event, we want the message node, which looks like this. This is important to remember whenever you're setting up your interface events. The actual event node is used within the blueprint that is performing the action, and the message node is used within the blueprint that is triggering the action. Before we demonstrate this initial setup here, real quick don't forget to add a nav mesh bounds volume into your level anytime you want AI units to move around. Alright, so we should be all set to test this out now. Let's go ahead and play an editor, and we can see Marty standing right over here. So now let's see if we click our example zero key, he should start wandering around. Perfect. All right, so now you can see that the basic trigger and event setup is working properly between the blueprints. Let's continue with our demonstration here now that we know how to implement an interface event chain. One of the main advantages with using the blueprint interfaces to trigger events is that you can also transfer references between where you trigger the event from and where the event fires from. So to quickly demonstrate this, let's improve how we're getting the reference to Marty within the player controller instead of using get actor of class every time or even once. We'll go to our content drawer, right click, and create another new interface blueprint. Let's name this one Interface Player Controller. Now let's open it and add a function and call it Create Marty Reference. We'll go to the details panel for this function and add an input variable. Let's name it Marty Reference as an actor object reference. Now let's go back to our player controller and add our new interface player controller to the class settings just like we did before. Then we can go to the event graph and add our new event, create Marty reference. Let's pull off from the Marty reference pin and click promote to variable. Now we can replace our get actor of class and just use our Marty reference variable to trigger the Marty move event. We'll just quickly go to our Marty actor blueprint and then on the begin play we can simply type get player controller and then pull off from there and search for the create Marty reference message node. We'll input a reference to self for the Marty reference pin since this is being triggered from within the Marty blueprint. Alright, now we can test this and make sure that the reference is now being created and transferred with the interface event instead of our get actor of class node. We'll play an editor again here and then let's go ahead and click our example zero key again to see if our reference is good. As we can see, we still get the same wandering behavior. So now we know that our example Marty Actor Blueprint is successfully transferring its own actor object reference to the player controller, which is being used to trigger the event. Alright, that's all going good, so now let's expand on our example one step further. 
Instead of just telling Marty to move around randomly, let's create another actor or object that we want to tell him to move to and interact with. So in the content drawer, we'll just right click and go to Blueprint, Actor Blueprint. Let's just name it Doorway for our demonstration here, and we can go to the viewport and add a static mesh. Let's just make it a cube and then adjust it real quick to look like a wall or door basically. I think that's good enough for our demonstration here, so we can go ahead and add it to our scene here, blocking this passageway. So let's say that this doorway actor will want Marty to provide a password in order to open up. But since Marty currently doesn't know anything about this other actor and he doesn't know the password, we'll need to input those references whenever we call the Marty Move event from our player controller. So let's go ahead and open up our Marty interface blueprint again. And for our Marty Move function, we can add input variables here. So whenever we call this event trigger from anywhere, it will ask for that data to be provided. So we'll add an input for doorway actor as an actor object reference. And then we'll add an input for password as a text reference. Now head back to the player controller where we're triggering this event. We should now see input pins on the message node where we are calling the event. If not, go ahead and compile and save and they should show up. So let's go ahead and fill these in. We can get the reference to the doorway actor in the player controller the same exact way that we did with triggering an interface event on the begin play from Marty's actor blueprint. So I'll go ahead and set that up just like we did before. And for the password, we can just create a text variable, add whatever we want the password to be as the default value, and then plug that into the message node. Now whenever this event fires within Marty's blueprint, these references will be passed through. So let's set up another example event for what happens if Marty reaches the doorway actor and provides the required password. We can go ahead and make another interface blueprint with a new event to put within the doorway blueprint. So let's just do that real quick, and then we'll add a new function. Let's label this one as ask for password, and we'll add an input for password as a text reference. Now let's head back to the doorway actor blueprint and quickly add what action we want the doorway to do when they receive the password. So as we did before, let's go to the class settings and add the interface doorway that we just created. And again, we just go to the graph, right click, and find our ask for password event. Let's add that and then we can pull off from the password text pin and do a quick check to see if the provided password is correct. A simple equals node, write in what the required password is, and then add a branch. So if this is true, then the provided password was correct. Let's keep it simple and just go destroy actor with the input reference as self, so the doorway will essentially be removed if the correct password is provided. And lastly, let's go back to Marty's blueprint and adjust what his Marty move event will do. Since we have our references here now, this will be very easy. Let's just get actor location from our doorway actor reference and then make that the location for the move command. Then on move completed, let's use that doorway actor reference to call our ask for password message node to trigger this. We'll also plug in our password variable pin, which was passed through along with the event. Alright, so we should be all set to test this out now. Let's see if our hero Marty can find the doorway and provide the password to let us through, even though he has no references to any of that information currently. So we'll play an editor one last time here, and once again, we'll go ahead and click our example zero key to trigger the Marty move event. There he goes, headed towards the doorway, and boom, we can see that he made it there and he gave the correct password. Thank you, Marty. I hope this demonstration has helped you learn how to easily set up a Blueprint interface event chain and how to expand on it however you need. But before we wrap up this tutorial, I have some additional tips. Another big convenience that comes along with Blueprint interfaces is the ability to essentially label any class or object. For example, say that you've got a variety of enemy actors that are in your game but maybe you want your character to have an ability that can target only a certain type of enemy. You can simply create an interface, name it however you'd like, and then add it to that specific enemy blueprint class. You don't even need to open the interface to adjust any settings or create any functions or anything. This will be similar to tagging or other forms of labeling, but with blueprint interfaces, it is literally that quick and simple. All you need to do is drag off from any reference and use the node does class or does object implement interface, which you can attach to a branch for a true or false response. However, as a caveat to this, remember that any child blueprints of this class will also inherit and implement that interface. So as always, just keep that in mind. An easy way to double check is just by going into any blueprint class and looking within the class settings. This will show you all inherited and implemented interfaces. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if you have any feedback or questions. And check out my channel here for more tutorials, tips, and information on Unreal Engine made easy. See you in the next one. Thanks. Peace.